Welcome, everybody. And I'm really excited by the talk we're going to have today with Dr. Justine Hextor, consultant dermatologist and specialist in skin conditions, including our topic today, which is rosacea. Welcome, Dr. Hextor. Um, can I call you Justine? Justine's great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. It's really kind of you because I know that many women do think they might have rosacea or they have a red skin tone and they don't realize it is actually rosacea. And yes. so they're not treating it in any way. But I think it's starting with that basic premise of if you have redness in your skin, yes. at what stage, Justine, do you realize it's rosacea? Are there ways you can tell? Yes, I think so. So, you know, some people have a high color and they're very active. So some people from the youngest age, when they go on a cold winter's day walk or, you know, sort of get a bit anxious, they can flush. I, I wouldn't necessarily call that rosacea. It just means that the vascular sort of, you know, tone is sort of you know, very reactive, but yeah. they're exactly the sort of skin type, which would be at risk of rosacea. So it's kind of recognizing the sensitive skin type that you've got. But then if you want to know if you've got actually got rosacea well rosacea starts to become things like you know you're flushing flushing for example when you've eaten spicy food had a glass of wine particularly changing temperature so going from outside to a warm temperature inside you can cause sort of flushing and then you may develop little papules or pustules etc or you might notice the capillaries are more fixed now you're getting sort of capillaries which are sort of more fixed in the skin so if there's redness there what is a yeah. pustule compared a pustule to the when you get little, like, almost like little yellow sort of spots on the skin so they're very superficial on the skin but you may just get under the skin papules so little things you can feel so when you run your hand over your skin it doesn't feel quite as smooth you can feel little papules and I think the other sort of sign of probably rosacea skin is that sensitivity when they put certain products on the skin for example if something's heavily perfumed or it's got alcohol in it etc then they might find the skin becomes stingy and, and so it you know it's very sensitive very jumpy. Are there also different ages in which it can present because I think some people might find that some suddenly they hit perimenopausal or menopausal stage and they get a more sensitive skin. So why would that be happening? Basically around the time of perimenopause, we start to lose some of our moisturizer in the skin, so to speak. So we start to lose our hyaluronic acid. Yeah. Things like ceramides, which are really important to you know, the sort of the brick wall of the skin barrier, that may change as well around the time of menopause. Around that time, people often say, that's when they come to me and they say, I you know, want to look great, et cetera. I've realized my skin's looking dull. It's not got much life to it. What's happening is because it's slightly more sensitive, because it's not holding in those, that, that moisture, you know, there's a sort of reduction, this sort of skin barrier, I suppose. They are immediately going to lots of actives. And so they're almost doing the opposite of what they should be doing. So they, they think my skin looks dull, so I need to be using sort of five, six actives a day. And all they're doing is is they're just increasing sensitive to the skin and then the skin gets more sensitive, the skin barrier is less effective, more moisture loss, duller skin, et cetera, et cetera. Most women, it's a time to really rethink their skincare because things that they may have tolerated previously, they will not tolerate as much probably around the perimenopause and recognizing that. And I think also, especially if you've done nothing before. So I've never had skin sensitivity and I've used actors a lot and I'm postmenopausal and I can still use them. From my perspective, I think if there's no sensitivity, I think we need that collagen, we need the omegas, the ceramides, as you say, the yeah. hyaluronic acids, but I still feel there is an opportunity you can use um, actives. If you look at the Fitzpatrick scale and you look at the yes. skin type that can get um, yes. rosacea, I've always felt, and I want to just bust this myth because I think it's incorrect, that if your skin is very olive and you tan easily, there's little or no chance you get rosacea, but I think that's not correct, is it? Yeah, that's not correct at all. No, exactly. And I see lots of people with type four skin who present to me with rosacea, but because it's not expecting that skin type, it gets misdiagnosed as acne quite often. And they may get sort of, because of that inflammation, they may get pigmentation issues as well. So I think because we all expect it in that type one, red hair, really fair skin, easy sunburning. And of course, that is the most common skin type to get rosacea, but it's important not to miss it in people who you know, sort of have got sort of a darker skin tone where it might be you know misconstrued as acne in acne we often you know get things like benzyl peroxide you know retinoids etc and whilst carefully introduced they can be tolerated in sensitive skin you know it's the opposite of what you need to be doing in the first instance to treat rosacea so they often also get the wrong treatment the opposite treatment of what yeah. would be helping their skin so so type one to type three we know for sure higher percentage but type yeah. four to type six can get it type yeah, seven can yeah. get it. i think yeah. mainly type four but yes absolutely absolutely yeah. what are the first steps of treating it 
The first step, in my view, is the story. So whenever someone comes to see me, but with rosacea, I take the story, take a careful history. It's yeah. so interesting. I, you know, I, that's one of the best parts of being a doctor, I think, is like hearing the story. It's really interesting. I'm listening to see where the triggers are, where things change, because I don't believe you wake up one morning with rosacea. So what happens is, you know, for example, two years ago, I don't know, you had a very stressful time. You start to notice you're getting sort of a bit of bloating, etc. Some foods you weren't tolerating as well. Your face started to flush. You had a bit of hair loss. You know, all of these things, you know, sort of ringing trigger bell in, in my head. You know, you started to notice that suddenly, you know, things you did previously you couldn't tolerate. My job is to unpick those triggers. So what is your trigger? Was it stress? Is there gut involvement? You know, you've got bloating now. Shouldn't be thinking about the gut microbiome. Is it that you've been using lots of actives and you've completely sensitized your skin barrier now? Mm-hmm. I've got patients who've suddenly moved to the South Coast. They've started sailing, surfing, and that UV intensity has gone up and that's triggered rosacea everyone's different but it's very very important to listen to them and see and I can then say haha that's interesting and then my job is to look at all of those triggers and and put them back together so to unpick the triggers so the worst thing I can do is so there's some antibiotics you've got rosacea oh by the way it will never settle down you know I think some people have had that experience going to a GP some GPs are phenomenal but where you know, menopause as well. It's like, have some antidepressants. Oh, you're red, have some antibiotics. It's what's that quick solution without being able to look detailed. So I think some people have access to a dermatologist, Justine, but I think some people don't because the dermatologist, you know, is not in England, for example, it's not a part of the national health unless you have presenting with something that could be a skin cancerous. In America, you know, everyone has private insurance. You know, many more American women have a derm. It's really yeah. interesting because many more American women on a sort of basic salary have some kind of medical insurance, which will cover them to yes. have a dermatologist. So I think we are really behind in the UK about having, you know, free advice. So yes. what would you say to somebody who's in the UK on the national health system and they are thinking, I don't think my doctor's got it right? So the first thing, obviously, the diagnosis is key. So think mm-hmm. about, you know, what what's going on here? And remember that you can have a confluence of things. So you could have a little bit of hormonal acne or something, you can have a bit of acne here and you can have rosacea so you can have both but if you feel for example that your skin's sensitive you find you're flushing when you've been out in the light or you've gone on a long walk etc then you've got to start thinking about what can I do to really shore up my skin barrier I want it to be as calm and, and you know sort of soothed as, as you can get it otherwise every time you get that trigger you get that immune response you get that sort of flushing the papules so be looking to use products which are going to be as gentle as possible on the skin. And as I always say, which I'm sure you're probably aware of too, is the, the cleanse is everything, okay? So if you're dripping your skin, you're on the back foot and you'll never catch up. So yeah. if after you've cleansed your skin, it feels tight and dry and irritated, it doesn't matter how marvelous your moisturizer is, you're already on the back foot and you're going yeah, to- you're, you're using the wrong skin. cleanser, yeah. And then the second thing you want to do is try and lock in some hydration to the skin barrier. You know, around perimenopause, you know, we will lose water. So when your skin is flushing, it's red and it's dry. I always say to patients, this is your skin barrier. So yeah. everything's getting in and everything's getting out. So all that moisture, so you each try and lock that moisture into the skin. And the way that you do that is to layer hydration in my view. Okay. Yeah. So I love, acid I, first. Yeah. yeah. If you can tolerate it, maybe an antioxidant like a vitamin C, you know, etc., to protect you from the light. If it's vitamin C, you're finding it difficult or stingy, then don't introduce it at first until the skin barrier is slightly better. Then I like things like hyaluronic acid because I love, will draw moisture to the skin barrier. It needs to draw some moisture from somewhere. So then you layer that with a lovely light hydrating moisturizer. So yeah. you're really putting some nice hydration to the skin. And then sunblock, really important. You need to use yeah. a broad spectrum, high factor sun cream not only from a rejuvenation point of view and keeping your skin looking young and wonderful but also that's your trigger for rosacea so those are really simple steps and if you just did that you would feel that things were settling down how much because we know how important gut health is to the microbiome and it you know if you don't take probiotic you know and your gut is not healthy that does affect your skin but you know what percentage of what we should do is about what we take internally 
Yeah, I think it's incredibly important. You're quite right. Looking at things like antioxidants um, to try and mitigate against that free radical damage, which is causing you know irritation or inflammation of the skin, is, is is a good idea. Absolutely. I don't think any supplements are substitute for a good diet. You know, so I always say to patients, you know, what you're eating. You know, um, it, it's it's incredibly important. So you want to make sure you're having sort of rainbow vegetables, and you know, your your, your plate is full of. Think about all the nutrient groups. That's very very important. A probiotic. For your gut get your gut as healthy as possible and yes consider antioxidants which may be able to switch off or mitigate against that free radical damage you get from external stuff like light so what food should we be avoiding as a list everyone's different you know so it depends on what your triggers are so keeping a food diary is really helpful some people say well, you know whenever i have wine doesn't affect me but a cup of coffee absolutely i immediately triggers my rosacea so the first thing to do is just to keep a food diary and just write down when your skin's bad, what may be triggering you. Things like spicy foods are very obvious, you know, certain alcohols. So for example, if you have a glass of white wine full of sulfites, that might cause you to flush and might be a problem, yeah. you know? So yeah. looking at organic things like alcohol and certain foods have quite high histamine. And so some people find that if they have like tomatoes, you know, that, that can cause sort of flushing. So yeah. I think it's, it's very dependent on the person, but I would say keep a food diary and just have a look and soon you'll recognize what your triggers are. You mentioned this before, Justine, but I've really noticed when I went into menopause, my relationship with sugar had to fundamentally change. And yeah. I have that, you know, I think once we can listen to our body, you yeah. know, I will, I will eat ice cream and I will feel my ankles swell. So if yeah. I'm feeling my ankles swell, what's happening to the rest of my body? Because that's one, a very symptomatic thing. But there's a, such a trigger that, you know, women go into menopause, they feel a bit low, they might drink more, you know, there's, there's yeah. that route. And equally, you're feeling a bit flat, you have, you have a nice chocolate bar, you know, you want something yeah. to give you that little high. But I mean, I just find sugar is, you know, it's very difficult to avoid. But what are your thoughts? thoughts on it yeah of course so we know that with sugar sometimes you can get this spike this sort of a spike in insulin and that's sort of pro-androgen so we, we you know there's lots of interest now around that and things like acne you know it's pro-inflammatory i think you want to try and yeah. keep inflammation down the inflammation it's all about the inflammation isn't it you know, it can affect your collagen you can literally bind to collagen it can affect your collagen so you know so absolutely i agree with you and i also agree with you how you know we have little triggers and we get into this situation where and it's really easy to say and i know my Myself, there are times where I think gosh I, this is too much you know children oh. job you know this age I, I, I think that that's true and trying to look at the person and, and, and listen to them and say okay where are your stress points you know where are your trigger points it's really helpful great and do you think people can heal themselves from rosacea well I'm going to say yes Great. I love that you say yes, because then yes. it gives people hope to think, let me do all the things you're suggesting, because yes. I could see some light at the end of the tunnel. Definitely. And I always, whenever I see that, you know, rosacea is a chronic condition, I think, no, rosacea is chronically badly treated. <laughs> Everybody, thank you for watching today. And I just want to give a big thank you to Dr. Justine Hexel. We will leave her information on this post. So if you want to get in touch with her directly, you can. And I look forward to our next meeting. Lovely, lovely to meet you. And thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a privilege. Thank you.